Hello, and welcome to episode 21 of the Julia the Knitter podcast. I am Julia, and I'm coming to you live from Queens, New York, where I live with my handsome husband, my two crazy kids, and my wild beast of a dog. Um, this is a podcast mainly about knitting and whatever other crafts I happen to be getting into at the time. And that's that. Well, we do currently have a knit along going on, so I hope that you guys are all tagging all your Christmas makes with hashtag JTK jingle all the way over on Instagram because I would love to see everything that you're working on and remember you have until January 1st to get your entries in um, mm -mm -mm. so I had every intention of recording last weekend but in all honesty my son would not take a nap and it just wasn't happening every time I tried to record something I kept getting a little head popping up right here saying hey hey look I'm here you want to see what I'm doing and he wanted to make his own podcast. And to be honest, it wasn't happening. So, so I'm here today. So I have plenty to show you today. Some stuff that I'm working on that I can't show you until after Christmas. And that's that. I actually don't have any works in progress to show you this week. How crazy is that? Because I finished so much stuff since we spoke last. So. I guess I'll, I'll just dive right in and just start telling you everything that I've been working on. So I know you guys saw these last time, uh, but they've been blocked now. So these are the Christmas socks for my daughter. And they're just two vanilla socks with a wedge toe. And I did Mina Phillips German short row heel on them. And the yarn is Scrumptious Pearl and her BFL base in the Where the Wild Things Are colorway. I really like the way they came out and they are nice and soft and feel good and I knit them kind of big so that they will hopefully last my daughter quite some time because she's she's just growing like a weed. Isn't that, the, isn't that the way it goes with kids? But I did show them to you last time but they've just been blocked so I wanted to show you that, you know, they, they look pretty nice. Um, the last update, just so you'll see of them from now. Using that same yarn, I knit a matching pair of socks for my son. Because, you know, what's better than matching socks with his big sister, who, as far as he's concerned, is just the coolest person in the whole wide world. So I wanted to use up as much of this yarn as I could because, let's be honest, who doesn't love knitting with self-striping yarn? It's just like, oh, I just want to do one more stripe, one more stripe. So, shh, quiet down. Somebody must be walking around outside, so my dog is trying to check things out. Calm down. So I did an afterthought pair of socks. Afterthought everything, I guess you could say. So I started out with one cup and I did about an inch of two by two rib. And then I knit a long, 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 long tube. Long, 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 long tube until I was just about out of yarn and I threw on one more inch of two by two rib. And I cast that off and I cut the tube up in the middle and I threw on a pair of wedge toes. I did not put any heels into these socks because I figured, you know, they might last a little bit longer on my son um, without a heel to heel in the way. So they're, they're like tube socks, so they'll last a little while. So, you know, say maybe his heel will come to here right now and then, you know, we've got all the space for it to grow until he's got like a foot like this. Maybe. Here's hopes. Here's hoping that it lasts us a little while. But again, the yarn is the BFL base by Scrumptious Pearls and her Where the Wild Things Are colorway. My toe is some leftover yarn I had from Lofty Loops in the, I think it was, she did a three pack of yarn for Curious Handmaid's Mystery Knit Along last year. Uh, I want to say it's like the lotus colorway, something with lotus in it, but this was the dark color in the colorway. And I had some left over and I thought that the color might look nice with the colors in the rest of the sock. And it does. So there you go. Those are my afterthought everything socks. Uh, what else have I finished? So you guys won't believe it. But the sweater, the big bad man sweater, is done. Well, kind of. 
I have buttons. I didn't sew them on, but it's all the ends are woven in. It's been blocked and it's gorgeous and it fits nicely. It's a little snug in the arms, but otherwise perfect. And it looks great. And my husband looks so handsome when he's wearing it. Um, this is the Knitter's Dude pattern by Andrea Rangel. And it's, I knit it up in the 2X size. I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, which is a worsted weight yarn, uh, in the Oyster Color Chestnut. I think this one was coal. Something like that. I'd have to look it back up. But I, I actually, I'll be honest, I almost miss having it on my needles. I'm almost, almost tempted to cast on another for my son and for my daughter and for myself so we all have matching sweaters. But I'm, but it, it, to be honest, it's crazy talk because by the time I finish said sweaters, the, my kids would outgrow them. So, Cause I mean, this one, it was a lot of work and it took me, I think I started it in February or March. I don't know. It's been, it's been like nine months. It's like a baby. It took that long to cook, to come to fruition. I, I don't need another one <laughs> just yet. So, so that's that. It's done. Maybe at the end of the podcast, I will insert a photo or two of my husband wearing the sweater. Uh, it just looks so good on. I feel like holding it up is not really doing it justice. And I know I could put it on for you guys and model it for you, but I'll be honest, it just doesn't fit me right. It looks just stupendous on him. So I'll, I'll put a picture in at the end so you can see. Um, I do have to sew buttons onto it. I think there's five or six buttons and I just got black, black buttons. I actually, funny story. I had bought buttons from Knit Picks when I bought this yarn to go with the sweater. I don't know where they went. They're gone. <laughs> so, so I bought a new pair of buttons. So there are black buttons and I just have to sign, sign them on. I have to sew them on this week. That's my plan. So that's that. The Knitter's Dude sweater. I, I, to be honest, when I started it, I didn't think it would ever be finished. And there were times that it got time out. But I just really, I'm very pleased with this sweater and the way it came out. I love it. I love it. So that's that sweater. Next up on the needles is a project that is done but you've never seen it before. So for my daughter, I knit up the Galloway hat, which is a pattern by the Brooklyn, T Brooklyn Tweed group. And it was in his most recent lookbook. I, I think it was called like holiday 2018. I don't have it written down, so bear with me, but it was a color work hat. And I knit it up in the Brooklyn Tweed. He kind he had put together a bunch of kits with his new base. It's a fingering weight base. Um, let me see if I have, I have the pattern here. I can see if I have the name of the base. I want to say it's like Prairie, Prairie. It's not Prairie. Do I see it real quick? Uh, Prairie, Brooklyn Tweed Prairie, which is 100% American Merino wool. And it comes in 50 gram skeins, 210 yards. Um, but the Brooklyn Tweed people, it's a great company. They put together these little kits and it came with enough yarn to make the hat. And so I chose the Winterberry color palette, if you will. And the color names, I had it right out here. Uh, the main color is this red, which is called Alizarin. The white is muslin. I have this pinkish color here called Mesa and this dark like burgundy color is called Palazzo. And now I had never worked with this base before. And when I saw Brooklyn Tweed yarns, I was thinking it would be like the rest of their, Amer I keep calling them American, the rest of the Brooklyn Tweed yarns, which kind of have a, a rustic feel to them. And they're very, they're woolen spun, so like they, they pull apart real easily. And a lot of people, I'm always surprised, a lot of people have a lot of beef with the yarn. 
I like it personally. I think it wears really well. I think it knits up so nicely and it lasts and it's, I, it has great stitch definition. I love that yarn. And I expected this base to be along the same, uh, similar in the same vein as, as the others, but it's not, it was actually very soft. I, I guess I should have read that it's Merino and that, uh, Merino is, you know, soft like purring kittens, but, but, uh, it actually, it's really nice. The stitch definition is great. I love the way all the colors work together. You can see that I didn't block the hat yet. So it's got a little bit of, uh, it could use a little evening out. But it's really nice. I did not do the longer folded brim. I'm always, you know, nervous about doing a folded brim because I'm sitting there, especially when you have a limited quantity of yarn that there's not going to be enough yarn to do the whole thing. Uh, but I probably should have done the longer brim. I think if and when I knit this hat again, I will do a longer brim and I will do more of the Sachi version. The hat comes in two versions, the beanie version and the slouchy version and with or without a pom-pom with or without a longer folded over brim I think I'll do it longer overall next time uh, but uh, it was such a pleasure to knit and it was quick and it was easy and it was actually a really great palette cleanser after working on the sweater because it had all this color work element but it wasn't really wasn't difficult the colors work so nicely together and I just I just wanted to pick it up all day I really just loved it so i need to block it i'll give it a good blocking this afternoon i meant to do it last night so that'll be nice and dry and blocked for you guys today but well too bad so sad so you get an unblocked hat maybe next time i'll show it to you good and blocked um but that's that that is finished uh i do have plenty of yarn left over the the contrasting colors i actually only have a tiny little bit of so here you can see the colors a little bit better on their own. This is the Palazzo color. It's actually coming out, I think, a little bit redder on camera than it is in person, but it's slightly more purpley, but it's you know, this creamy, not white white, but it's almost like a clay white, and this uh, pinkish color, which makes me think of like stucco in New Mexico. And then this was the main color, the red, which is coming out a little bit more brighter on camera, I think, than in real life. But it was beautiful. I actually have a lot of the red left over, so I could definitely see myself putting a lot more, using that again for something else. It's really soft, it's got a nice spring to it, great stitch definition. It's a very round yarn, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, it's gotta be, I wonder how many plies, it's gotta be at least four ply. See if I can see real quick. One, one, two, three. Yeah, I'd say it's about a four ply fingering. Uh, I mean, those of you who spin, you know, the more plies you have, the rounder your yarn is. Um, but it's got, it's nice and red. It's got nice and red, nice and round, and it's soft like merino, like merino should be. And the colors were great. I actually was pleasantly surprised by the base. Uh, it's not what I expected it to be. And it was just, let's be honest, it's everything we've come to expect from Brooklyn Tweed. I love Brooklyn Tweed yarns. I love their rustic ones. I now love this one. And they always put out great patterns that are well executed. The writing is clear and they're clear instructions and they're just always so beautiful. And sometimes they're just a little bit something different, which is nice too. I really enjoy their patterns. Every time I knit one, I, I find myself, I usually end up knitting more than one of the same pattern. I've knit a few of their hats several times. So, so that's the Galloway hat. I don't know if I actually said the name of the pattern. It's the Galloway hat. I would recommend knitting it to all of you, especially if you're loving color work. I don't think the color work is particularly difficult. Uh, you're really only working two colors at a time. There are some rows where there's three colors in the same row, but the third color is a slip stitch from the row, row below. It's it's not difficult. It was it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I could put the hat on for you and show you. It's a little small on me. Like I said, I would knit it 
a little bit longer because I like it to cover my ears. But let's see if you can get a better look. So you kind of see the hat. I feel like it's popping off my head. But it feels good. I think it'll look really nice on my daughter. My daughter is a red girl. She loves red. It's her favorite color. So I think all these shades are really nice. I was thinking about putting a pom-pom on top. My husband says my daughter is getting to the age where she doesn't need pom-poms anymore. And I'm sitting there I'm like, I don't think anybody ever gets to the age that they don't need pom-poms anymore. But uh, I don't think, I actually really like the way it looks without the pom-pom. That, and I've never made a pom-pom before. And I've got slight, like, ennui about knitting a pom-pom. Isn't that silly? I know. All right. So that is that. Those are all my finished objects. So much, so much at those. It's crazy. Um, like I said, I do have a work in progress, a whip, that... I would love to show you, and I'm actually really enjoying working on it, but I can't show you. Uh, it is a Christmas make, and it is for somebody that I know is usually a viewer of this podcast, so I don't want to spoil the surprise for the person. But I will most likely do what I did last year, and right before Christmas I will... Make sure to do a podcast with all the Christmas makes in the podcast to do a Christmas make roundup, if you will. Um, but I will not record, I will not post the podcast until after Christmas so that I know that the gifts have been given and I'm not spoiling anybody's Christmas present. So there. So there. Um, that being said, since I have been working on Christmas presents, I can't always work on them when I have the recipients in the same room, which happens pretty often. Like I'm not going to knit my kids socks in front of them. Uh, I'm not going to knit stuff for other people in front of them while they're here. So, so my scrappy crochet blanket has been getting quite a lot of love in the last week or two. Um, the last time you guys saw it, I was about here, kind of where this dark row here with purples and browns are. And I put, it doesn't look, it's hard to see, but there's actually two different colors here. They're kind of similar. They're both a little white. One's a little bit more bluer. Uh, there's pinks and there's this creamy and this brownish one. And it's probably a good two to three inches that I put from here to here. And as you, if you recall, since it's been a while since I've had the blanket on the podcast, the blanket is wide enough to fit my queen size bed. So it's about 360 something stitches across. And right now it's got to be about, it's at least two feet. I would say it's not quite three feet. But it's this way across. I'd say it's it's about an arm's length across, uh, tall. So, so that's pretty big. Uh, and the rows take me a little while to do. Uh, I am knitting it up, knitting. I am crocheting using a G hook, which is a four millimeter hook for those of you on the other side of the ocean who use metric like the rest of the world. Uh, I had started using a regular Susan Boyd hook uh, and I treated myself to a, you know, a, an ergonomic hook. I don't remember the name of the brand. Let's see if it says a clover. Clover. I think I picked it up at Michael's at one point some time ago. It was cheap. But I will say I do notice a big difference in the comfort level. It doesn't hurt my fingers as much using it. I tend to squeeze a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm using. So I've got a whole bag of minis, not minis and scraps from other projects. It's all fingering weight. Um, I am currently, so this is actually all I had left of the yarn from my kid's socks. So there's maybe a few stripes left in there, but enough at least for a row 
I like it. Um, I had some minis that I wound up into a ball. My yarn winder, my yarn winder, my ball winder is oh, my ball winder. Sorry, my yarn swift has been it's been on we we've been on the outs for like the last year, and I really do need to get a new one. I think I have you know I have the basic wood one from Knit Picks. It's got to be ten years old at this point, but it's just it doesn't really stay up anymore. So when I put stuff on it to hold it while I'm winding a ball of yarn, it collapses and it drives me crazy. So I've been hand winding a lot and uh, it just takes longer. And you know, I miss being able to wind it up real quickly, but I did, I did learn how to do a magic knot when joining yarns uh, from watching Katie, Miss Lavelli from Inside Number 23's October and I'm like, oh, why, why have I not done this sooner? So I magic knotted a few minis into a ball and so they're all, I think I actually only had two colors left in here, but um, so I had a few minis that I had strung together, which is nice because you don't have to stop and and pick what mini you're going to do next and you just kind of keep going and that's, it's actually been really, really nice to sit down with my blanket and and work on that add a few rows here and there so i've been getting some work on that lately and that is about all the knitting that i really have to show you guys um i was thinking about doing a vlogmas this year i know a lot of you are doing it and just like the rest of you i love i love watching vlogmas videos um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know vlogmas is it's a video blogging challenge in the month of December leading up to Christmas and people record so you know getting ready for Christmas and their daily lives and all that crap. I do some fun I do do some fun things on the weekends, but most of the time I'm cleaning up and you know I'm just hanging out with my kids. And then during the week I'm at work and I have a two hour commute to work and a two hour commute home from work. So and it's it's not I don't think it makes for good vlogging to be honest. Uh, maybe someday I will do a vlogmas. I'm always thinking about it. I'm always tempted to do it. But I'll be honest, I just don't think I have the time right now. <laughs> so, so I will continue to watch uh, everybody's vlogmas. And I don't know, maybe here and there I'll sprinkle in a little extra clip of, of our Christmas celebrating and preparation and all that. But you know, that, that's where we're at. <laughs> so. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the episode. That is about all that I have for you today. It's, I was going to say short and sweet, but no, we're at about 23 minutes at this point. So it's, we're at about our regular amount. Uh, I hope to have plenty more to show you next time. I have a few things that I'm thinking about casting on and I'm sitting here saying, well, you know, I've got maybe about two and a half weeks to Christmas. I wonder if it's really practical to be able to get both of these things finished in time for Christmas. And I know one of them definitely is. And the other, I think I might put off until after Christmas. Um, it'll be more of a just because kind of make. But I think that's, that's all I got for you guys. So I hope you have fun. I hope you're all enjoying your December and, and enjoying if your holiday seasons, those of you who celebrate Hanukkah, I think we're just winding up Hanukkah this weekend. So have a great Hanukkah. And those of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope you're loving getting ready for Christmas and all the other holidays. I hope you're enjoying them too. I'm not going to say happy holidays because that's just not my style. I'm a Merry Christmas kind of girl. So adios. I'll see you guys all soon. Bye. <laughs>